First, with March Madness in mind, what's the plan for sports betting in North Carolina? I don't think you can see us jump quickly on the bandwagon. Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. $8.5 billion. That's a lot of money, right? In fact, if you laid $100 bills on top of each other, $8.5 billion would take you more than five miles into the air. That stack of money is how much will be wagered over the next three weeks during the NCAA basketball tournament. The American Gaming Association says one in five adults will put some money on the line. The vast majority, 40 million, will fill out a bracket, wagering a combined $4.6 billion. But this year, something is different. This is the first March Madness since the Supreme Court opened the door to legalize sports gambling in places other than Nevada. Take a look here at this map behind me. The states that you see here shaded in green, those are now places where you can place a bet on a single sporting event. There are eight states in all. Three of those states, Nevada, New Jersey, and also here in West Virginia, also have legalized online sports betting. Now keep in mind, you have to place the bet from a device actually in one of those states. So you can't place that bet from, say, here in North Carolina. All right, go back to the map here and take note of all the states colored blue. It includes both Carolinas. Those are places where bills to allow sports betting are under consideration. One of those states is also neighboring Tennessee. Lawmakers there debating this issue just last week. They see it as a way to bring in new revenue. Yeah, I think every city and every county is uh, looking forward to the opportunity to actually receive money uh, from the state and uh, actually keeping dollars, especially in West Tennessee, as they see a lot of money leave to our surrounding neighboring states to see some dollars actually stay within Tennessee, and I think that's important. Now, the bill currently under consideration in North Carolina would allow sports betting at the Cherokee Casino in far western North Carolina. You see it here on the map. Uh, it could lead the legislation, though, to make it more widespread in our state. For any bill to get passed, it will have to get through the Senate Commerce Committee. It is chaired by Republican Rick Gunn from Alamance County. We spoke to him earlier today from his office at the General Assembly. There's nothing better than March Madness, and as you know, uh, uh, even along these halls here, I imagine that there's a bracket or two that might be uh, uh, being filled out now. Uh, obviously, the dynamics has changed with the uh, uh, federal um, uh, decision here, and I think what we're going to look at is if we know that uh, sports gambling is, is, is going on, we, uh, we have an opportunity, I think, to... Uh, uh, look at uh, whether we should go ahead and, and regulate it, uh, uh, make it transparent. Uh, uh, I know it's going on. I know that it is a, a, a common uh, form of entertainment uh, uh, for folks in North Carolina, even though it is just, you know, against the law. So I think we're going to have some good dialogue on this. Not sure about the timing, but uh, I think this is a topic uh, worthy of uh, further discussion. Uh, how might this look here in the state of North Carolina? Um, I know some states as close as what West Virginia have already uh, okayed it. They've also got online betting that is available in that state as well. Uh, what would it look like here in the state of North Carolina? Well, I, once again, I think I think the key to this is when you've got a a body, uh, when you've got entities that are are looking to literally uh, bring bring this type of uh, activity to the state, but more importantly, to make it very transparent to make it very regulated, to uh, have a tax component to it that uh, could bring in revenue. Uh, I, I think that we will look at best practices. We'll look at other models, what, what's been working, how, how uh, where they maybe uh, stub their toe a little bit that we can improve on. So I think this is one of those where I don't, I don't think you can see us jump quickly on the bandwagon. Would you expect uh, some real hard pushback uh, from those, especially in, like, say, the faith community when it comes to this? Well, and, and, and certainly so. I think the faith community is correct in making sure that we do not uh, have activity here that uh, could potentially uh, uh, turn south on us. But, but I think if we look at it and, and know that uh, we're going to have some next stairs, but at the same time, we've got an opportunity to... Uh, to regulate it and, and to make it a very uh, uh, regulated, transparent uh, uh, activity. 
Now, you heard the senator there talk about revenue coming into the states. How much money are we actually talking about? Delaware is one of those states that legalized sports betting last year. It was up and running for about seven months in 2018. 1.6 million bets in all were placed, totaling almost $87 million. But Almost 77 million of that was paid back in winnings. After you subtract some vendor fees, the net proceeds totaled just under $9 million. Sounds like a lot, but keep in mind, the total operating budget for Delaware is $4.4 billion. So the gambling money is 0.2% of the total budget. We talked to Fred Parrish, a financial expert, about this aspect this afternoon. Uh, Fred, I appreciate you jumping on with us tonight to talk about this. I think a lot of states see this as potentially some sort of panacea of a lot of money some, suddenly coming into state coffers. Is that going to be the case? Well, from what I understand, it is probably not. Uh, it sounds like to me that uh, the revenues, uh, at least uh, from what they have looked at so far, has has really come in at less than 1% of the, uh, the state's budget. So it doesn't sound like it's going to be a tremendous amount of uh, cash coming in. So perhaps earmarking a couple of projects here and there, but it's not going to be a changer uh, when it comes to the overall budget. Well, that's exactly right. And, you know, unfortunately, there are a number of uh, states that have huge unfunded liabilities and certain pension plans and other similar type projects. And I don't think this is going to even touch that. I do wonder, though, sometimes when if neighboring states are going to do it, is there going to be that pressure to, well, I have to jump in, too, because Tennessee next door, South Carolina next door, Virginia next door is going to do it. Right, and that actually is going to cut into the uh, the revenue for the state. Obviously, if there are uh, more states in a general area where that would be the the betting, uh, the gambling would be possible, then uh, that pie gets smaller for each state. Uh, talk up a little bit about the danger, though, for the individual as well, because obviously, uh, you know, we know playing the lottery doesn't have great odds. They have great buildings in Las Vegas built on people who think they're going to get rich and don't. Uh, obviously, the same kind of holds true for this, doesn't it? Well, that's right. And, and I think that, uh, you know, on the individual level, uh, the uh, legislatures are concerned about the addiction issue. Uh, you know, from a uh, from a state perspective, uh, that probably is not going to play too well with their constituents. So I, I think that there are a lot of pitfalls here. A bottom line, though, uh, given what we're kind of seeing right now with the environment we're in, do you see any stopping it, though? No, I really don't. Uh, I, I'm sure you know exactly how this game goes. Uh, you know, politicians like the idea of, of additional revenue, but in the end, they can't seem to uh, really have most of those funds go to the original intended purpose. They always end up somewhere else, at least in my experience. Line of all this, the expansion looks to be coming, and you may have noticed television and cable channels are gearing up. Not since the days of Jimmy the Greek have handicappers been this popular. You should always be wary when betting on teams named Duke, North Carolina, Gonzaga, and even Virginia in this tournament. Listen, the sports books know that people want to bet on teams that they know, and those are the four teams that everybody's been following the most all year. You're going to be paying a premium to bet those teams. Yeah, ESPN and Fox Sports have or are creating new shows tailored to gamblers. One of the contributors to ESPN's show, Daily Wager, says she expects the sports network to eventually have one of its channels solely dedicated to gambling. And of course, all this has the attention of the sports leagues as well, considering the NFL, NBA, and Major League Baseball and the rest are providing much of the content. Yeah, they want a piece of the action as well. The talk centers around what would be called an integrity fee. A set percentage would go to the leagues to compensate for their use of their intellectual property. So what do you think? Has the time come for sports gambling in the Carolinas? Email us or hit us up on social media using the hashtag OISTonight.